Today I'm going to be showing you how to build this paraffin heater from a kit and you may have seen the one that I've had in my messy garden shed and had a lot of positive comments on this so decided to do a review of the kit and I also have the kits for sale in my Etsy shop along with the paints and the brushes and everything else I use to complete the kit. Okay, let's get started. So this is how your kit will arrive with you, everything in the one little bag. And you've got a full instruction leaflet in there. And on the back there is an exploded diagram of how the paraffin oil heater goes together. And then you've got detailed steps of how to actually put it together. And there's nine steps in total. They do tend to put a lot into one step. I would have probably broken it down a little bit more. But having said that, um, it is an, a nice easy kit to put together. And then the kit is made up of ten parts. So when you open your um, little bag, you just want to start by making sure you've got everything. And you'll have six white metal pieces. And the remaining four pieces are on this etched brass sheet. And this makes up sort of the, the cylinder part of the heater, these two pieces. And then you've got a couple of little embossed um, finishing touches really there. As an adhesive for the product, a quick setting epoxy cement is recommended. And I'm going to be using this Deluxe Materials Speed Epoxy, which is a two-part adhesive. So you've got the adhesive and a hardener. And when they're mixed together, they create a really strong bond, which will bond most materials, including wood, metal, most plastics. Now these are the 71 gram size um, and they are actually quite expensive for this size. Deluxe materials do a smaller size, I think it's a 29 gram. Or in my Etsy shop you can find a Gorilla Speed Epoxy which comes in 25 gram tubes and a little bit less expensive as well. Now unfortunately that can't be shipped outside of the UK so if you're elsewhere in the world then do just search Google for a speed epoxy that will bond metals. Begin by having a look at each of the pieces and you're just looking for any little lumps and bumps that shouldn't be there or any little overhanging parts of metal and if you find any you can just quite easily snip those off using a craft knife and that's really just where when they come out of the mould sometimes it doesn't always break away as it should so you may find some little bits left that shouldn't be there. And I've been all around these and I haven't found any little lumps or bumps. And I've got here some wire wool or steel wool. And I'm just going to give each of the piece a gentle rub over with it. And that will just ensure a nice smooth surface. And then... I'm also going to do that with the brass sheet and that's just really to key it up a little bit so that it takes the paint more easily. I'm going to do that on both sides. And that's just so I don't have to worry about which side I've keyed up when I come to construction. It's just worth saying as well at this stage, if you wanted to leave all of these brass bits as brass, you would need to paint all your other kit pieces first before constructing the heater. For the final stage of preparation before we begin, I've got some warm soapy water here, and that's not dish soap, that's just um, a mild hand soap and an old toothbrush and I'm just going to give each of the metal parts a quick clean and that's just to get rid of any of the mould release substance that they use that might still be sitting on the metal. There's no need to clean up your um, brass sheet because that's cut in a different way. So just really gently clean around the metal. onto 
into a piece of kitchen towel to dry off. Another thing that is recommended in the instructions is to use plasticine to hold the pieces together um, once the glue has been applied. But I'm actually going to be using tacky wax, so you might want to have some tacky wax handy. And we're going to begin by cutting out the parts from the brass sheet. So using a nice sharp um, craft knife, just begin by cutting across the little um, tabs that hold the pieces together. And you want to cut as close to the actual part as you can without cutting into it so that there's no little um, sort of pips of metal left. You can also use small sharp scissors to do this. And I can see there that I have got a little bit of um, metal, one of the little attachments there. So just go along again, get rid of them. Like that, and do the rest of the pieces. Those to one side and then I would keep um, the brass sheets got quite a lot of um, brass left on there which you could use for another project so I'll put that in my materials drawer so before we begin constructing the heater we're going to curve these two brass pieces which make up the barrel of the heater now I'm using some dowel but you could also use just a, a pencil and I've cut a couple of pieces of masking tape here which I'm going to hold it into place once it's curled around the dowel. So just lay the metal sheet down and begin rolling it around the dowel or your pencil and this is going to be rolled smaller than we need but the actual spring in the metal um, will make it spread out once we come to attach it into the first part of the heater. So it doesn't really help matter how small you go with it, it's just getting it to sort of train it into a curve. So a little bit tricky to get started there. It is actually quite a, a thick brass sheet, but once you're started, it's okay. I just now want to see if this masking tape will hold it. Yeah, so press your masking tape on nice and tightly. And that is holding it. But if not, you can use a small elastic band. I'll just pop that to one side. I'll leave the down sort of tucked in there. And then do the same with the smaller piece. the masking tape. Okay we're now going to begin construction and the first thing we're going to do is put the narrower of the brass sheet into the recess of the base ring so the largest ring the one with the feet and then we're going to fit the central ring on top. So have those two rings ready like that and you can put the rest of the parts to one side. Take the smaller etched sheet off of the dowel or pencil or whatever it was you used. And don't worry if it's sort of curled up too small because we'll be sort of pulling it back to the size that we need. And then just a couple of things to check on here first. If you look above the little sort of etched pattern all the way around, you've got a little hole there and that's for the little turner knob. So just make sure that that little knob fits in there. Just sort of twist it round, pushing it in at the same time. And if that hole feels a little bit tight, just keep sort of twisting and it will make the hole big enough. And you want the little knob so that it's sitting flush up against the brass sheet there. So that little sort of moulding 
around the centre of it is sitting flush towards the sheet. So just check that that fits first. And then when we attach this, the little hole will be towards the top and we want it to be at the side. So decide where you want the front um, of your heater. So you can either have it so you've got like a foot facing forward or I'm going to have mine so that the centre between these two feet is the front. So then work your sheet back into a nice cylinder and then just sit it in that recess and you want it so that it fills the recess so that it's pushed right to the outside of the base ring. And as it says in the um, instructions, this is the trickiest part. So just take your time with it. Pull it to the outside of that recess. You can actually use your cocktail stick to sort of push it into shape. Push that bit out a bit with my finger. So once you're happy that that's sitting in the right place, so that it's right out to the outside of that recess, use your little bit of uh, masking tape just to hold it there for a moment. And then you can mix your glue, get your glue prepared. So with glue like this, you should always use it in a well ventilated room. So I've got my window open. Now this nozzle on this one has actually blocked. I'm going to have to tip it out of the bottle. And it normally comes out far too much, too quickly. So I just want a little bit like that. Because this will um, set quite quickly as well, so if you leave it on your card for too long, it'll just be wasted. And equal parts of that one. And I think I said to you before in my one of my doll's house diaries when I used this, the smell is absolutely awful. I don't know about the gorilla one whether that's any better. I'm sure they all have the same sort of ingredients in them, so it probably smells just as bad. So give that a really good mix. Oh, my cocktail stick's just broke in half, so I'll put that in the bin and get a new one. And then we want to glue this ring together along that back. So remove it from there and sort of trying to keep it in the same shape. Just allow those two back pieces to open. Apply a little line of your glue. And then we want to work quite quickly here. So we want to join it, but sort of get it back into the recess so we can get it to exactly the right um, size again. So with the line of glue on there, put it back into place. And then you want to press those two back seams together. Another cocktail stick there just to push it right out to that edge. And it will keep trying to come out because it's trying to stretch sort of to its full width, I suppose. So I'm just holding that together just while I grab a clamp. And I'm going to clamp those two back seams together at the right size there. And then just pop that to one side and then apply glue around that recess. So you want to get it onto the base and to the side in there. And then very quickly you also want to apply it around this under recess of the next ring. And this will sit inside the top of the cylinder. Okay, so holding that on my finger, I'm bringing the ring back in, put that back into the recess and then I want to put this central ring on top so that it's just inside the brass sheet. I'm just looking around the back, you want to make sure that the flaps 
are sort of tucked into that base ring. Use your cocktail stick to sort of pull it into shape. I'm going all the way around the inside there with the cocktail stick. I just want to make sure that's sitting in properly as well. So I've got the cocktail stick there in the little hole where the little knob will go. So I want that visible, so I've just twisted the whole thing round. It then advises to weigh the piece down, so I'm going to put that on there like that. And I've got a little tub of paint here that I'll put on there. And it does actually advise now to leave that until it's fully cured, which would be 24 hours. So the lower section of the heater is now completely dry. I left that dry in overnight. And the next stage is to fit the upper barrel. So you can go ahead and remove your masking tape. And then we're going to fit the top part. Now you just need to bear in mind that at the top here, again above the embossed pattern, you've got a hole at either side, which is for the handle and then in the top part you've got these grooves at either side which the handle slots into once it's in place so you need to make sure that first of all the holes are facing towards the sides so remember we spoke about choosing where you wanted the front of your heater and mine's going to be sort of in the center between these two feet here so I place the little hole for the sort of turning knob at the side there. So you could line it up so that your holes for the handle in this barrel piece are sort of in line, or certainly the right hand side one is in line with that hole. But just make sure that they're at the side so when your handle's attached it's going to be sort of in the centre. And then you need to make sure that those grooves are sitting directly above those holes so you just need to make sure that one of them is above one of the holes and then the other one will line up. So first of all sort of reshape your um, barrel so you may just need to widen it a little bit just around your finger. Make sure you've got a nice smooth finish and then you want it to sit right in that sort of next recess in there. And because this has sort of been curled up overnight, it's going in a lot more easily. And if you've got any sort of little bits like I have there that are going in, you could just put your finger in or a pencil or something and just push them into that recess. So you want a nice smooth finish around the edge there. It is quite difficult trying to get it to slot in because it's trying to spring back. So I'm just using the pencil there to push the um, brass sheet right into the recess so that there's no gap in really. And then once you've done that you can dispense your um, glue. And I'm actually going to put these latex gloves on to do that because one of the bottles um, has split slightly at the top and yesterday I got on my hands and even though I washed my hands several times I could still smell it um, later on in the evening. It's not a very nice smell either. <laughs> okay, so I've mixed up my glue there. And then I just want to begin by applying a bit in the um, recess around that base part. Spread that around in there. And then I'm just going to apply glue along the back line of the barrel. And just open that out a little bit. And then I want to fit that into place. So you can sort of squeeze it to make it smaller to fit into the recess. 
and then let it sort of naturally spring open. And I'm just pressing it together at the back. I know these gloves are a little bit too large for my finger. It's better with them on because I, I am touching the glue. And I'm just going to use that pencil again just to press the brass right into that recess. When you're happy with the positioning of the barrel, you can then apply a little bit of masking tape or use your tacky wax just to hold that in place at the back there. And I'm not going to leave that to dry overnight this time, but I do just want the glue to start to set and then I'm going to attach the top piece. So I said I wasn't going to leave this overnight, but actually I, I did in the end. So I'm going to remove that masking tape very carefully. And then next we're going to attach the top piece. And this is the piece I said to you had little um, grooves at either side and they need to sit so that they're right in line with those little holes at either side and that's where the handle will go. So just sort of try it into place. Make sure that it fits inside your brass tube, which it should if you push the brass tube right to the sort of outer edges of that central ring there. And then I just want to make these little holes at the side a little bit bigger. A clean cocktail stick without glue on the end. I'm just using a cocktail stick and just poking it in and twisting it round. Don't go in too far with it. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've tried the handle and it wasn't quite going in, or not easily enough anyway. So then bring the handle back in and just make sure it fits into those holes. And you can see it's just a little bit tight there. It is going in, but I'm having to push quite hard to get that in there. And I'm just thinking when the top is actually in place, that might be quite tricky. I'm going to I make that hole a little bit bigger. So I'm just pushing the cocktail stick in a little bit further. The thing is, it's very close to the top, so you don't want to push it in too much so that the brass sort of splits. So that's just worth checking before you glue that top bit in place, that you can actually fit that through the holes. And you could even do it before you've attached this um, sort of brass barrel part. Just make sure the holes are big enough. OK, so I've dispensed some glue here and mixed the glue. And now I want to apply a line around the sort of recess inside this top piece. And then when you attach it, just make sure to remember about those little grooves. And they should sit just behind the hole for the handle. So as long as you get one side lined up, the other side will automatically line up. So press that down. And then the next thing we're going to do is attach the little the brass circle onto the top there. And I probably should have done this before I glued it into place, but just begin by making sure that it fits. And that does, that's a really lovely fit there. And just slot that out. Pop a little bit of glue again around the inside of that top part. And just drop that into place there. And you can press it into place with your cocktail stick. Okay, so in the um, instruction leaflet, it says um, that you can now paint this piece or when the glue has fully cured, you can paint this piece. 
and then it advises just polishing all of these little detailed bits. So your little handle, the little front bit which goes up there, which is like a little shield, and then the little sort of window which sits over the opening there at the front. So if you want to do it that way, then obviously leave these off, leave that bit to dry, and then we'll move on to the painting stage. But I actually want mine to be all the one colour, so I'm actually going to attach these pieces now. So let me use that other cocktail stick to hold that with, and I'll begin with this little window. What it actually suggests as well in the um, instruction leaflet is at the end you can um, put a little bulb up inside, either electric or a little LED bulb, and then you can attach a little bit of um, red paper, sort of from um, like a sweet wrapper, on the inside which makes it a nice warm glow and I really like the idea of that. Okay, so that's in place, but that actually now needs to be shaped around the barrel. So I'm going to just push that into place with my fingers. And then, actually I think I might use a little bit of masking tape just to hold that in the curve. So let me grab a little bit of tape. Stick that down like that. I'm actually just going to curl the top bit of tape over because I've just realised it's overhanging where I want the little shield to go. I just had to replenish the glue because that had just hardened off. So I'm just going to put a couple of little dots on the back of this front part and that will just slot right into the front, into that little hole. I'm wiggling that to get that little insert into the hole. And you need to push it so that it's right sort of flat against the brass barrel. Make sure it's straight as well. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of tape over that too. Make sure that's staying straight. Sort of line the top of that little chill bit up, either with the top or with the sort of pattern around the barrel. And finally, I'm going to put the little, um, I don't know what they've actually called it, which one sort of knob, I suppose. I'm just going to put a little bit on the end of it there and around the little lip. Pop that in there. So I am now going to leave this to dry once again. So the only part that I haven't attached is the handle and I'm not going to attach that actually until um, I have painted it all and I'll paint the sort of arms of the handle as well, these, these bits at either side. I'm going to leave that um, silver and that will then be attached right at the end just so that this handle can still move around otherwise we'll paint it into position. OK, so once again I left my glue to dry overnight, so that's now completely dried. I'm going to remove the masking tape. So with this little um, bit that slots over the window there at the front, it's still sticking up a little bit on that side. I'm not too worried about that as this is going into a shed so it doesn't have to look perfect but I would advise maybe wrapping that piece around the barrel of a pencil as well just to sort of curve it before you glue it into place and that should solve that problem. Okay so I'm now going to give it another clean 
and it does actually advise this in the instructions to clean it at this stage. I would still recommend um, giving all the individual parts a good clean at the beginning just to get that mould release product off and it's easier to get into all the little nooks and crannies when the pieces are, are separate. So I rinsed that off in some clean water to get rid of all of the bubbles and I've dried it off well with a piece of kitchen towel. And now I'm going to apply the first coat of paint and I'm using the Humbrol Matte Enamel and it's 01 um, which is called Primer and it works really well as a base coat. And I would always advise doing a base coat because then you're going to get a better top colour. And I've given this a really good shake and then I've stirred it really well with a cocktail stick and I'm using the largest of my three um, detailing brushes, so the 02. first coat of paint on the actual heater and I'm just using the cocktail stick there to hold it steady as I painted and I've propped it on the top of this plastic um, box so that it won't stick whilst it's drying and the brass sheet is probably going to need two or even three coats I'll probably say two coats of primer and then two or three coats of um, top coat but we'll see how we get on and don't be tempted just to apply it heavily onto the brass sheet as you'll lose some of the sort of lovely etched detail in the sheet there so that can now be left to dry and I'm just going to paint the um, side parts of the handle I want to keep the little top part silver That too could be left on there to dry. Okay, so I've just given the brass barrels a second coat of primer and as you can see that's given a really nice coverage now. So just one coat on the metal parts and two on the brass sheet will be enough um, to make a really good base coat. Now I'm going to leave this to dry now, it's almost four o'clock so I'll leave that to dry overnight and then apply the first um, coloured coat tomorrow. The base coats are now completely dry so I'm going to apply the first top coat and I'm using a matte colour and it's matte 90, 90 and the colour is called beige green and I've given that a good shake and then I've stirred it really well and let's begin the first coat I'm thinking we're probably going to need a couple of coats, maybe three, but we'll see as we go along. Okay, so that's the first coat of paint applied to the heater and the handle. And just on the handle, try not to apply the paint along these areas here that actually go into the holes at the top of the heater or you'll find that they won't fit. So I'm now going to leave that to dry and I'm pretty sure it's going to need a second coat but maybe only two coats. I'm quite happy with the coverage of the first coat. OK, so that first coat of paint is now completely dried. That's been drying for about six or seven hours now. So I'm about to apply the second. If you see around the top of the barrel there and around the middle of this one here, there's some really lovely little details, sort of little sort of cut out um, shapes. So if you find that they become clogged up with um, paint, what you can do is just go around with a pin and just sort of poke through and poke out the paint. So I've just done that after the first coat and I'll do that again after the second coat if there's any more sort of clogging. 
but it's a shame to cover those up because it's such nice little detail. Okay, so once again I've shaken and stirred the paint and I'm going to apply the second coat. And actually now the first one has dried, I'm pretty sure two coats is going to be enough. There's quite a nice coverage on there. The second coat of paint is now completely dry and I'm really happy with the coverage so I think two coats of paint will do it. And now I'm going to attach the handle and this doesn't need to be glued so just pop it into the holes at either side. You can squeeze it in and then you could always use a little bit of tacky wax if you want to sort of keep that upright like that. I'm going to wait until mine's in position um, and then I'll decide whether I need to glue it or whether it can just lean against um, something. I'm using this in another one of my sheds and it's going to be a potting shed. So with that in mind I'm actually going to add a little bit of rust in. I want it to look a little bit old and worn but of course that stage is optional. You've probably seen me use this technique before for creating the rust. I've got a little bit of um, white spirit in this jar. Just dipped the paintbrush into the jar and then put it in there. And I'm using a matte um, paint which is called 110. I think it's called Natural Brown. And that's a humble enamel again and I've given that a good shake. And I actually just want to dot a little bit in with the white spirit and what that will do is just sort of thin it up a little bit more and if you don't thin it it will just look like um, splodges of brown paint on your paraffin heater. Put that lid back on and then to apply um, the paint. I'm using a little bit of a upholstery sponge but you could use a brush but again you want a really sort of small brush so it doesn't just look like splodges of paint. So let me just dip the sponge in there and I'm just going to dip a bit of it off inside the bottom of the jar. And it's always a good idea just to have a little try around an area that you're not going to see so much and just dab it on really gently and on the feet there. The sponge is hardly touching the heater as I'm doing that. I don't know if you can actually pick that up there but I, I'll um, sort of take a uh, still photograph of it at the end and show you how that looks. Maybe a little bit on the knob there. In fact the handle's coming off as I'm doing it so I'll take that off for now. Like that. And maybe a little bit around the window at the front there. Notice that I haven't put the sponge back into the um, paint yet. Still just using what's on there. It's lovely bright sun out there again today, but it's not very good um, on camera. <laughs> I'll dab a bit on the top there. And I always have a little bit of spare sponge handy and if you dab a little bit too much on, which I just did there, but actually it looks quite nice, you can just dab it off again. And you won't actually get it off but it will sort of disperse the paint. Give it a more sort of rusty effect. So I think that's it for the heater. And then I'm actually going to put a little bit on the handle as well. I'm going to pick up a bit more paint I'm going to put it on that actual handle there maybe people would have moved the handle with damp hands I 
a little bit around the arms of the handle as well. In fact, I'll leave that to dry in the sun there. And this won't take as long to dry as the actual um, coats of paint did. And then once that's dry, I'll reattach the handle. And there is the completed piece. And I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. And I love the rust effect on there as well. I think the rust really adds to the sort of authenticity of the piece. So in the um, instructions it suggests using a little bulb inside the heater. So I've got a bulb here and this is a flashing bulb and I actually ordered this for the Arga in my kitchen. I just want to be able to pop this inside to make it look like there's a fire burning in there. But when you actually put it on it does flash but it's not at all random. I, I was expecting it to be more of a flicker bulb but actually if you do um, just pop it inside there it does sort of look like um, a flickering flame and then they've suggested using a um, sweet wrapper across the front of the little window in there to make it look like a nice warm glow well I, I thought I had a sweet wrapper somewhere but I obviously didn't keep it so I've got a little bit of red tissue paper here and what I'm actually going to do is push that inside just to sort of diffuse the flicker and obviously so that you can't just clearly see that bulb in there so I've just screwed up a bit of tissue paper I'm pushing it towards the front and then I'm going to pop that bulb up behind it make a bit of room for the bulb at the back there so I'm going to that up there let's turn that on And I think that just sort of um, dulls it down a little bit. And that actually looks quite good. But you could obviously just use a, um, a plain bulb and use the red again to give it that sort of firelight glow. Or you could just get a red bulb that, that doesn't flicker if you preferred. And let me just show you this little um, LED light. Like I say, I ordered it for my Arga. I'm going to use the um, tissue paper in there as well because I think it, it sort of breaks up the flicker or the, the flashing on and off but it also sort of throws the light around so the light will sort of bounce off the tissue paper giving it a more sort of random glow but it's just basically a little holder here and there's a little battery inside and obviously these won't sort of come on automatically with your other doll's house lights. You will have to sort of um, switch them on and then put them into place. But it's just a nice idea if you haven't already added a, an electric light into a space. And you can get these um, for lamps and things like that. And ceiling lights as well, I think. You can get battery operated ceiling lights. So it's just a little... Um, CR1220 cell battery which is a little 3 volt battery there I don't know which way around it goes now like that I think that just sits in there and you screw the back down and then you've just got a little on and off switch you could shorten the wire if you wanted to I've just sort of curled it round and you could do that as well for this, so you just um, have that inside there and then hide this piece in your display somewhere. And I can actually supply these, so if you would like one of these, do let me know. Like I say, I only ordered the one because I was just ordering it for my um, own doll's house, but then I just thought about using it in here. So if you'd like to order one of those, let me know. I'll get some in next time I place an order with my supplier anyway. And the batteries come separately, but I can supply those as well. 
and if you haven't got any red tissue paper just let me know and I'll just pop a piece of that in with your parcel free of charge if you'd like to create this sort of similar effect. So as an overall review I think this is a fabulous little kit. A couple of um, parts are quite tricky to put together but I think you would expect that from a kit that's as detailed as this. It took quite a while um, to complete but that was more um, a question of letting the paint dry completely before moving on to the next stage and that can take six to eight hours. So I left mine overnight and just got on with something else in the meantime so if you've got a lot of projects on the go then it's ideal you can just sort of dip in and out of it but overall a really enjoyable build and I think you'll feel a real sort of sense of achievement once you've put it together and on top of all that I just think it looks fantastic it's a really lovely little design and I'm looking forward to including this in my next shed which will be a potting shed so look out for the tutorials for that as well here on my YouTube channel and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial stroke review. These kits are available in my Etsy shop and things um, that I review on my channel do tend to sell out quite quickly. So if you get there and they've sold out, don't worry. Just let me know that you like one and I'll order some more in. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If so, please do subscribe to the channel as there's lots more to come. And if you enjoy making your own doll's house furniture and miniatures, you might like my books. I've published four of them so far, and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. Just search for Julie Warren and you'll find them. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.